Hi, this is Martin Lamonica with CNET. I'm at the ARPA-E Summit outside of Washington, and there's a showcase for many energy-related technologies. The point of the conference is to showcase all of these potentially disruptive energy te technologies. I've been talking to some of the people, and here's their story. I'm uh, Ross Youngs, I'm CEO and founder of Algae Venture Systems. And what we're doing here at the ARPA uh, Innovation Summit uh, is we're presenting our technology, which was an awarded uh, the initial 37 ARPA E awards. And one of the reasons we were awarded that is we've got a transformational technology that takes algae out of water. Essentially, imagine taking the green out of Kool-Aid. Well, what we've done is created a innovative, patentable technology that does this at very low energy. What does this mean potentially for the world? Well, it doesn't only mean algae fuels, but it means potentially foods, feeds, fertilizers, nutraceuticals, pharmaceuticals, and potentially a lot of different products from algae. Okay, so how do you do it? Well, we do it by using surface chemistry. So instead of using a centrifuge to spin up an entire mass of water just to accelerate sedimentation, we're using surface chemistry properties. And the, basically the adhesion and the co-adhesion of water and water to other materials, and it's very low energy. A fraction of the energy of a centrifuge. That's why potentially economic viability can ensue from this project. Scott Ferris, CEO of Planar Energy Devices. Okay, and you're making a solid state storage device. Yeah, so what we're trying to do here is eliminate a lot of the volatile liquids and non functional materials out of a traditional lithium ion cell by creating a all solid state inorganic uh, battery system that has 100% active material. By eliminating the volatile materials, the liquids, the polymers, we're able to increase the energy density of the cells by two to three hundred percent. We're able to drop the materials cost by sixty percent. We're able to drop the cost of manufacturing by fifty percent. Plus, we have cells that last a long time and uh, give great performance. So the idea is that you sort of spraying, you're spraying a little metal. So yeah, the key layer, innovation right? here is that we've developed a technology that allows us to deposit uh, semiconductor quality materials, but doing it in ambient conditions. So we're not doing it in vacuum, we're not doing it in high temperature, we're doing it in a room like this, we're growing films very rapidly, and we're growing films that have actually better or equal quality than we're pulling out of a traditional vacuum chamber. So what would be the use? So they're smaller, they're lighter, they last So they're longer. smaller, they're lighter, they'll last 10 times as long, and so from an energy storage perspective, we believe this is a breakthrough technology that enables not only cell phones that can charge for weeks on end or last on charges for weeks on end, but on a large scale, this is really the pathway to give us practical electrical vehicles. Uh, David Mather. Okay, David Mather. MTPV. Uh, MTPV. I'm a board member and one of the founders of MTPV. Okay. Uh, we make semiconductor chips that convert heat directly to electricity. So much like uh, solar will take sunlight and convert that to electricity, we do that with any heat source. Okay. So we can expose it to high temperature waste heat, um, uh, and various sources of heat that exist today, free, easy access, plentiful, we convert that to electricity. Is this technology that's been known for a long time, but you're now just trying um, to make it more efficient, or? A little bit. Thermal uh, photovoltaics uh, have been around for about 50 years, but they don't really generate enough electricity to be economically viable. And the okay. world really has really desired to have chips that can make electricity. Solid state devices, no moving parts that can make electricity. Well, we've basically patented uh, micron gap thermal photovoltaics. What that means is, uh, by working in the near field, we're able to exceed the limits that were placed on thermal photovoltaics. So now you actually can use chips because we can create 10 to 50 times more power than the, anybody has ever tried to do in the last 50 years. So you have this chip that is heated, it glows, and then there's a photovoltaic cell. cell underneath that chip, about 100 nanometers apart, which is 500 times smaller than a human hair. Okay. So they're very, very close together. And when they're in that near field, there's a tunneling effect, so more photons get converted to electricity. Huh, okay, so what are the initial markets you want to go after? Uh, the very first market's uh, waste heat. Um, so there's an enormous amount of waste heat in the world. There's about $600 billion worth of waste heat uh, just in the U.S. manufacturing segment alone. And for comparison, 2007, we sold only $300 billion in retail electric sales. It's an enormous source of free electricity fuel. Huh. Uh, open and closed flares, Petrochemical, gas and oil, uh, 
the coal bed methane when they're venting the methane and burning it, because methane's worse for the environment than CO2. Instead of just burning it, great electricity. Right. Okay. So what? If all goes well, you get funded, the technology consumers to develop. What's your hope? When would this actually come to market? Um, we actually were quite far. This is the first commercial device that you probably see behind me. Um, this device should be selling, or hopefully, at the end of this year. So it's going into beta testing next month, um, and we'll be entering the market with the uh, first product in the uh, waste heat market. I'm Don Runkle. I'm uh, the CEO of uh, Eco Motors. Uh, we have a, a new proprietary engine technology. It has uh, some unusual claims you normally don't find. It has about 50% more fuel economy than a standard conventional engine. It costs about 20% lower uh, from a cost standpoint, 30% less investment. It's half the weight and half the size of a conventional engine. So it doesn't get any better than that. Right. So, so, so what's the secret? How, how, do, you, how do you get the that? The secret is the opposed piston, opposed cylinder, architecture engine, so it's an architectural change, it requires every stroke, but it passes emissions, so that's the trick of the intellectual property in that. So it has very, very high power density, just like your laptop computer is enabled by the high power density of a lithium-ion battery. This also has very high power density for the size of engine. And so if if tomorrow morning I could wave a magic wand and everyone was, had this engine in their car, you would not import any oil from the Mideast. Why is that? It's that simple. Why? Because our efficiency is that high. So, so we would use that much less oil and we would have the lowest carbon footprint and at a cost savings. That's what makes the world go round is inexpensive thing to do stuff that's better. Okay. So if, if, if everything goes as well in terms of hitting your design goals, sure. you get funding and everything else, how, how does this come to market and, and when would you like to see that happen? A couple different ways. We would expect to be in the market in the uh, fourth quarter of 11 next year, 12 time frame. We would either license this engine to a company like Ford Motor, General Motors, or Honda, someone like that, to design an engine for them with our architecture. Or we would be an engine manufacturer selling to people that buy engines, like Gensets and, and other people. Uh, my name is Corwin Hardham. Okay. And I'm the CEO of Mechanic Power. Okay. And Tell me what, like to, what, well, Makani does high wind, so what, 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 uh, what is Makani that? does not exactly high altitude wind, actually we, um, we do what we call high capacity wind. So the, uh, the idea here is not to go to the jet stream, but rather to, at altitudes which are only slightly above where terrestrial turbines operate, sweep out a much larger area with much less material. The larger area leads to a double in a capacity factor. And the greatly reduced material of the kite on the end of the string means your total materials are about 20% that of a typical wind turbine. So you decrease the capital cost while doubling the energy output. Now, how would you deploy this? I mean, this is a prototype here, right? And this is that's one of them. Yes, one of the prototypes. Uh, so it deploys itself. It's completely computer controlled. It flies autonomously. Well, do you launch it like a rocket, or do you? Do you uh, so there's some images on the video here of how it launches, but um, the small rotors on the edge of the wing, and the rotors are what we use to extract the energy. So as it's flying around, we're taking energy out before we drag. But just as you know, if you're driving your electric vehicle and you can put on the brakes and take energy out, or you can put energy back in by stepping on the, the gas pedal. Right. Um, on this system, you can also put a little bit of energy back in and fly it around like a plane. So, remote control by... Well, it's all computer controls, and the brain of the computer is in the wing. It's John Langdon from Virid Technologies. Okay. We use a continuously variable transmission to make wind turbines in a new and different way. By using the transmission, we can have a variable speed rotor and maximize the power capture in the wind, but we can still use an inexpensive constant speed induction generator reducing the overall cost of the turbine about 20%. Because we can precisely control the, ro the rotor's motion and use a larger motor, we can also generate roughly about 20% more power than a comparable machine.